Large stretches of our homeland lie along water. America's largest cities and most populous towns, the ports through which we buy and sell with the world, all sit on shores and waterways. Our waterfront has always been a source of prosperity. Now, it is also the target of our enemies and of nature. And when America's waters are threatened or pose a threat, the nation calls on the U.S. Coast Guard and DHS. The hurricane force winds are now being felt in this area for the very first time. The wind continues to pick up. The rain is pounding. Now many reports are coming in stating total structural failure in the New Orleans metro area. As Hurricane Katrina wheeled toward the Gulf Coast, the state of Louisiana called on the federal government for help. Even before the storm struck, Coast Guard special units from as far away as Ohio and California gathered in central Louisiana, ready to assist along the Gulf and step into their role under the National Response Plan. In the aftermath, the Coast Guard was first on the scene, rescuing survivors, cleaning up millions of gallons of spilled oil, and providing port security, law enforcement, incident management, and salvage assistance. The Coast Guard's response to Hurricane Katrina was extraordinary. Uh, we saved tens of thousands of people with our boat crews, our aviation crews. As good as our response was during Katrina, we can actually do better. We overwhelmed the situation with helicopters, people, boat crews, and Coast Guard men and women doing extraordinary things. A more orderly approach, I think, is what's needed in the future. Working with FEMA Urban Search and Rescue, other deployable rescue teams, first responders, uh, state and wildlife, boats, and so forth, we can do a better job. It's a matter of how we coordinate it and how we uh, bring it all together in what I would call an adaptive force package. These lessons have led the Coast Guard and DHS to a broader vision and more streamlined approach to national emergency response. Basically what the Coast Guard is looking to do is to bring all the deployable specialized forces under one unified command. That command will be the sole force manager and force provider for U.S. Coast Guard, Department of Defense, Department of Homeland Security, and interagency operational and tactical commanders. By bringing them under one unified command, we're developing the capability to rapidly create integrated adaptive force packages, properly trained and equipped for rapid deployment to meet the mission requirements of the operational and tactical commanders. What makes these capabilities possible is the DOG, the new deployable operations group. The DOG is not an expansion, but a realignment that places the Coast Guard's emergency response assets under a central command, allowing for better planning, readiness, and faster response with a full complement of the deployable specialized skills and resources the mission requires. Multi-mission shore-based forces are the nation's Maritime 911. Serving in small boat stations and organized by sectors, they provide rapid response all along America's 95,000 miles of coastline and 25,000 miles of navigable waterways. The aircraft and cutters of the Maritime Patrol and interdiction forces extend the country's wall of security far offshore, where they enforce U.S. laws, intercept threats, conduct at-sea search and rescue, and perform national defense missions. And the six components of the deployable specialized forces are trained and equipped to respond to natural disasters, environmental catastrophes, terrorist incidents, and other threats anywhere in the United States and around the world. It is these six highly skilled teams that comprise the DOG. At this point, we have really six specialized groups of folks in the deployable operations group, our deployable specialized forces. First off, I'll start off with the National Strike Force, National Strike Force Coordination Center, and the strike teams, which are our hazmat, chem bio type response capability, and they operate worldwide. We have our port security units, which are primarily reservists, and they primarily deploy expeditionary, support the Department of Defense, but they have deployed domestically as well and are going to become more integrated and more interoperable with our active duty forces. We have our maritime safety and security teams, which are anti-terrorism um, anti forces as well as port security force protection. And they operate primarily domestically, but they have an expeditionary role as well. We have our tactical law enforcement teams, which comprise our law enforcement detachments. 
and they primarily do counter drug operations, but they also do maritime interception operations in the Persian Gulf and elsewhere, as requested by the Department of Defense. They conduct training for foreign navies and foreign coast guard. We have our Naval Coastal Warfare personnel, which are part of the Naval Coastal Warfare community within the Department of Defense. And then we have our Maritime Security Response Team, which is our premier counterterrorism team, and we're building out that capability and making it more effective as it becomes part of the Global Operations Group. With these six unique components under a central command, the Coast Guard and the nation gain huge benefits in operational readiness. By bringing the units together, we can send a tactical law enforcement team out to there. We, we can send parts of the National Strike Force. Those teams can come together in any type of environment and conduct operations and be able to understand the working relationships between those teams. There are a few different scenarios I think that would work well underneath the Deployable Operations Group. Uh, one scenario, for instance, may be an event in a harbor in, let's say, Los Angeles. And in this harbor, they may have a, a threat stream that would indicate that a ship is coming in with possible chemical or biological agents on board. We'd be able to pull members from our strike force, as well as members from our maritime safety and security team and our law enforcement detachments, put them together in an adaptive force package be able to respond to that threat stream. And that would just be an internal Coast Guard only force. Now we could also team up with Customs and Border Protection as well as Immigration and Customs Enforcement personnel, take folks from their teams and put them together with our Coast Guard units to have a more robust entire Department of Homeland Security response force in that same threat scenario. The dog might be new, but the Coast Guard's ability to rapidly deploy the right people and right equipment and coordinate that deployment with the efforts of other agencies is not. The Coast Guard's the right agency to form and deploy an operations group like this because of our multi-mission character, the fact we are expert in small boat operations, law enforcement boarding, space accountability on vessels, and plus our extensive knowledge in working with the interagency and partnering with stakeholders. The Deployable Operations Group is the next step a continual process of growth and refinement that enables the United States Coast Guard to master changing threats and changing times. When we think about force structure in the Coast Guard, we think about what I call a strategic trident. We have shore-based operations through our sectors. We have maritime patrol forces out there. Those are our deep water forces. And now we have deployable forces that can surge into a harbor in response to an incident or a heightened threat level. That's what the Deployable Operations Group is intended to do. The DOG is going to become the center of excellence for adaptive force packaging in the Coast Guard, and I think for the Department of Homeland Security. And I think we offer tremendous potential for interagency operations and our partners with the OD. It is the next step in national readiness.